Hello and welcome to M&B Air Gun Review. Um, I've been really busy lately, guys. I apologize. I've been tinkering. I should say not tinkering, but playing with the uh, Cattleman M1. Um, if you saw my last video, I did refinish the stock on that. It looks absolutely amazing. I'll show that to you at the end of this video if you'd like to see it. AEA's right here in the back corner. An amazing shooting bullpup. 25 caliber PCP air rifle and it's amazing. Can't say enough about it. It's great. Um, got some FX hybrid large hollow point, uh, 44.5 grain slugs, 30 caliber air gun slugs. Pretty, these are supposed to be a pretty stable flat trajectory slug. We'll see how these work. At 100 yards, but what are we going to use it in? Well, if you watch my last episode, you'll know what we're going to use it in. But let's unbox that. What do you say? I got some, some stuff in store for you today. So let's do that. This is not the normal setup, as you can see. I've got a window behind me. Normally that's uh, taboo, but you know what? Let's get you out of video today and uh, shoot straight, straight from the hip. Just This just arrived. It was a little late, but not too late. Um, Come from Pyramid Air, nothing, it's their fault, it was FedEx's fault. Pyramid Air does a wonderful job. But what's in this? What, uh, what is in this box? Well, it's something that I've wanted for quite a while, but I never pulled the trigger on. But it was time to. I said, you know what, it's time to. And they came back in stock, and I said, well, if they come back in stock, I gotta pick one up. So that's what I did. If it's the right one, right? If this is what I think it is. And you're probably recognizing the box already. Let's see. We got anything else in here? Be a slip. Let's see. There's, I know there's got to be something else in there. There we go. There we go. Packing. I like to keep track of my invoices and stuff. So just set that up there. But do you see this? Well, it's obviously a hat, hot sign box. But... What's in it? Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to see. So let's let's open it up and see. I actually already know, but at least I think I know. Could be wrong. Could be something totally wrong. I think. <laughs> I like it already. Of course, we got a warning. Um, this is seriously solid. It says serious solid impact, and. We have a site, and then we have some tools. But what's in the box? Mike? Well, it's got quiet energy on it on the end of it. So what's that mean? And this thing's heavy. <laughs> oh, this thing! You man, I pictures don't do it justice. The pictures don't do it justice. Are you ready? Well, without any further ado, look at what we have here. Ten pounds. About 10 pounds of hot sun brake barrel 30 caliber with a vortex system. That's a seriously monstrously long rifle. Um, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It does have their, their quiet energy technology. Um, got a pretty trigger on it, got some adjustments on the trigger. Solid looking thing, cheek rise on it, adjustable cheek rise. You know, the, you know what surprises me? It's it's heavy, but it's got a nice balance to it. They kind of did their homework on that. I'm really digging. You know what? That is odd. Huh? Try that right. Oh boy. Like the open sights, the uh, got fiber optic dot open sights, really cool, really really cool. Um, we're gonna have to dive into this. This is pretty. This got some pretty good quality to it. A lot of good heft. I can't wait to get out to the range with a thirty cal brake barrel, and of course we have our thirty cal FX hybrid slugs. We're gonna run in this, and we are gonna try the golf ball challenge at a hundred yards with a brake barrel. And see if we can pull that off. It does have, looks like a weaver, weaver style 
scope mount. Um, of course, that means the search is on for another dedicated scope for this one. And this does have the sling mounts already on it. Um, it's got nice stippling on the, on the stock. I like it. I like it a lot. And wait till we dive into the internals of this, because I got some tricks I'm going to show you guys that I learned on this. And we're going to put those tricks to the test and see if they actually work. So, hot sun, 30 cal, Vortex, Quattro trigger, SAS, shock absorber system, and does have quiet the quiet technology. And this is the Carnivore 135 with the wood stock. Yes, quiet energy. So that's a 762 millimeter or 30 caliber. This is made in ta -da, Turkey. All right. Pretty cool, right? All right. Let's move on to something else real quick because I'm it's a big gun. Okay. But let's go on. Let's move on to something else that you guys want to see. Because my email blew up. My personal email blew up when I showed pictures of the M1 that I just refinished the stock. Had some little downtime with the M1 because, well, I'm testing the, the AEA right now. So I had a little downtime at night, and I decided I was going to, well, do the stock. The stocks that come on are, are beautiful. They really are. I like a glossy finish. So what I did is we did this, and we made it like glass. And that's pretty, right? It's beautiful. And it's so smooth, just like butter. And uh, I really like it. And now, this has a lot of coats of true oil on it. A lot. I got a time lapse on how to do this. A lot of people want me to do it for you guys. I wish I could. Seriously, I have so many requests for me to do some stocks right now. It's I've never didn't ever realize I'd get requests like that. But um, I. Didn't want to do mine. <laughs> I, it's not something that I enjoy doing. I can do it, but I don't enjoy it. It's not something that I enjoy. And and to be honest, if I had to do that for somebody, I'm going to have to charge them so much money. It's just not worth Honestly, it's just not worth it because there's so much time involved. That time lapse that you saw was basically three days of work crammed into less than a half an hour video. Um, so... There's lots of buffing in between coats, um, being very meticulous, coming back, making sure you got no runs or sags, getting them out, knowing how to thin, um, you, you know, thin your true oil and do it correctly. So sometimes, I mean, that, that video is a general video on how to do it. And it's not something that you guys can't do because you can do it yourself if you have the patience and the time. But set aside a few days if you're going to do it because start in the morning one day set aside some time to do it because I've done them before and there's can be a learning curve, but nothing that can't be, you can correct it. If you make a mistake, it is correctable. That's what's nice. A little sanding, a little time, it is correctable. Um, but this one happened to turn out exceptionally well, exceptionally well. Um, so well, in fact, that a lot of people don't even think it needs a final sand and polish, but it does. I assure you it does. But once I got, there's so many coats on here right now forget how many I put on but there's so many I think after the video I actually went back and did one more um but I'm gonna have to go back this I'm gonna let this cure and, and this is not an overnight cure thing I'm gonna let this cure for a few weeks before I come back in and then give the whole on a nice wet sand really really fine wet sand by hand really fine very lightly just to take off any little imperfections that might be in there any dust and then I'm gonna polish and buff it so really be quite the showpiece. I think it turned out amazing. I think it looks great. Um guys, I can't do your I can't do your rifle stocks. Um I just don't have the time. I've got too much going on. I don't enjoy it for one. It's not something that I enjoy. It's not my zen. Tinkering on them, tearing them apart, find out what make makes them tick and improving and um and um diet troubleshooting stuff like that. I love it. That kind of work, don't fall over on the M1, don't fall over, don't fall over. That kind of work right there, I do it for myself because I want it 
and I'm a perfectionist. I need it perfect. You know, I need, it has to be perfect because it's for me. I don't have the time or the patience to do it for other people. And I, I don't mean to sound mean. I just, I apologize for that. But I just don't. And if I did, I mean, you're talking three days worth of labor. And I'm meticulous for myself. I could be twice as meticulous for somebody else. And it just wouldn't be, it wouldn't be cost effective for you or time effective for me. Um, we're moving. I'm trying to pump out videos. Um, I got lots going on. Um, now it's time where I had to get back in the gym and then I said I mountain bike and, and I rode bike and, you know, we got motorcycles and fun and then we got drag racing. We got, I got so much going on. I just wouldn't have time, honestly. I got a full, I got a full plate and, and then, you know, we got two beautiful little girls that take up um, a lot of my time, which I love and that's the most important thing to me. So I'm sorry. I apologize, but I can't do that. But we're going to move on. So. You guys, as we go, are slowly learning more and more about, well, things I do, my hobbies. Some of you know what I do for a living, some don't, but I don't like to get into that because that's personal life. But as we go, usually you guys kind of pick up hints here and there, and, and you see kind of what's going on a little bit in my life, and I'm, you know, I got my regular studio that I do some videos in, and I got other places that I do them. I try to do them when I can. I always pretty much have camera equipment with me. And if I need to put out a video, something comes, or if I'm at an address where I have something shipped to and it comes, I can I can I can uh, put out a quick video, kind of like I'm doing today. Um, but I'm going with that. Let me find, as Batman would say, my pewter. Um, wherever that is here, we'll just use. Let's grab this one. So, check this out. A lot of us air gunners hunt. And we want to get back off the beaten path, up into some back trails or, or whatnot. But, you know, it's, it's sometimes we can't get back in there with our vehicles or, you know, it's a, a, basically a, a, a cow path or a, a bike path. So a lot of us, and some of us don't, so we never, never use bikes to get back up in there. And I'm a, I'm a bike, I'm a mountain biker. I love the mountain bike. I like the road, road bike. Um, another hobby of mine. Um, I love it, but I wanted an e-bike. Not that I'm lazy. I wanted an e-bike to get back into some of these trails when I have, say, probably not the AEA because that's pretty heavy, but um, a nice light rifle. You're hunting. You do rabbit, whatever you're doing. And they make racks for the e-bikes and everything else. So, um I've all, I've been tinkering with the idea of an e-bike for a while, and I'll be honest, we can talk road bikes and mountain bikes, and, and I can fill your ears full of specifications and what I think makes a great mountain bike or a road bike or a time trial. Um, but in the electric bike market, I know nothing. I can look at the components and tell you if it's got good components on it. Look at the welds and tell you if it's a good frame or not. But as far as the what's on it because i've never had my hands on one to look at the electronics i've never looked at the batteries um i mean i know i know their functions and i know you know cell rates and i know voltages and i know what claims are but as far as getting one and actually really checking it out and diving into it i never have but i want to so i i'm getting one um and Last year was really difficult when it came to bikes, getting them. Prices skyrocketed if you could get them. Small little bike shops. Th these guys are shutting down. Some of them are shutting down right now because you know what happened? They still can't get bikes this year. The manufacturers are not shipping your small mom and pop stores any goods. They're giving it all to their big sellers and on their online sellers, which is really really grinds my gears, right? So I have local businesses that I like to deal with because I like to keep business local as much as I can or small shops around the United States that I can deal with. There are still small businesses to keep them going. I like to contribute where I can. And what I find, found is a lot of these businesses, well, they're backed up on service because people are having a hard time getting bikes and the, the the small businesses aren't they're not allowed to have bikes. I got a, I got a local businesses sold specialized. 
can't get any bites. It's going to make two years in a row now. So, if you got big money and you're a big name and you're a big bite shop, you can get it. But, you know, screw the rest of them, I guess, is the attitude. It doesn't sit very well with me. So, I started looking outside. Well, if I'm going <laughs> to... Gonna boycott something because of that. I'm gonna boycott. Well, whatever specialized. I won't own another one now. That kind of really got me when I found that out. So, and people can talk and you can say that's not. Trust me, that's not. That is how it is. I've talked to many bike shop owners. That is exactly how it is. They cannot get the stuff. At first, they tried to say, well, you know, special specialized in this and that. No, specialized screwed them. That's what happened, and it's sad. And they're now they're looking for other brands to carry because they can't get their regular bikes. There's a GT dealer local here, and um, I walked in today. Can't get any bikes. What? It's going to be another year without bikes, he says. Service out the butt, but guess what? Can't get the parts to service them. So they're just lined up. I know I'm off on a whole different rant, but... Back to the e-bike, because this is very useful to, to us air gunners. I ordered one. Uh, I'm not even sure how you pronounce this. I think it's uh, Unaru, E-U-N-O-R-A-U. -E and I believe that stands for Europe, Northeast, and Australia. I think that's what it stands for. And they had one here. And I've been looking, and they're expensive. And everybody's, you know, you got e-bike snobs too. You got bike snobs. Like I said before, you got bike snobs. I know the bike snob thing really well because I'm a biker. But you got e-bike snobs too. And e-bike snobs are funny because they're all about, most of them are all about, you know, the mid-drive the mid -drive hubs versus a, a rear hub. And we can go into phys physics on stuff there too because there's simple principles that they don't understand. They think they do, but they don't also when it comes to... The physics of how things work but we can dive into that later if you guys are interested but not in this episode because we're an air gun channel but anyhow it's 2021 27.5 inch bike's got three inch fat tires on it um so it's an electric power assist bike and this one is a hub motor and i know a lot of listen mid drive's great i was looking they, they're great i understand the principle of a mid drive I don't want to mid-drive when I'm rolling over a log and I smack my bottom bracket. don't want to mid-drive. So I went with a, a good, supposed to be good, hub that has some good reviews on it. So I went with one. And this is pretty cool. See this or not? Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? So let me give you some specs of this, guys, if you're looking for one. Because this is really cheap for what you're getting. Now, the wattage is not crazy. This is only a 350 watt, but it's got a max of 500. It is pedal assist, but from the testing I've seen on these bikes, it seems way more powerful than the claim, which is good. That means the electronics and the engineering and the electronics are working properly, basically. So that's good. But it's a 36 volt, 350 watt, okay? Um, 6061 aluminum frame, full suspension. Okay. That caught my attention right there because in a mountain bike game, a bike with a good frame and full suspension, you're starting like with Polygon and stuff like that at over $1,000, $1,200. You're starting there. Now, component-wise, a Polygon is definitely better as far as a full, you know, full suspension mountain bike. But um, this does have an air shock. Your maximum speed on this is 20, which is with a few pushes of a button increases. Um, charging time takes four hours. It has, of course, it has a lithium ion battery and a thumb throttle. So it's power assist, but it has a thumb throttle and that's a plus. Um, stainless spokes, not going to rust on you. Um, and this has sun race and a Sierra seven speed freewheel. Either one, you can get either one because of a bike part shortage, but both are great. I'm using them both. They're both great. And it's got a 36 tooth front, um, um, chain wheel crank. Tektro hydraulic brakes. So it's well equipped. If you guys any, know anything about bikes, it's well, it's pretty well equipped for what you're getting already. And it's electric. It's supposed to have a decent saddle. Ken Central, if you ever check him out, he's a great 
bike review channel. Been watching him since the beginning because I'm a bike guy. Awesome. He's reviewed it. He was impressed with it. And he pretty much, he's really the main reason I bought it. And I don't think they're going to be available very long. Um, especially at that price. I think they're going to run out any day, I, I guess. So anyhow, my point is, my point is, I want to get back into some spots that I normally wouldn't wouldn't get into. Okay? I normally just wouldn't. Um, with this, I will. I can get back in. Um, they make a rack you can put on the back so you can strap your compound bowl, whatever you have with you, with you. Backpack on, however you want to carry your stuff up there. Pretty cool idea. And battery's supposed to be pretty decent. Um, I think, what did they say on this? It had a pretty decent range, if I remember correctly. Hold on here. I know they have it someplace. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's look. I want to say it was around 25 miles, but don't quote me. Anyhow, decent. Decent. And you can pick up a spare battery. Their battery's really cheap, too. So you can have a backup if you want. With your order, cheaper than you can buy most regular bikes for. Decent ones. So I wanted to share that with you. I thought that was decent. If you guys want a review of this when it comes, let me know. I'm not going to review it unless you guys want one if you're interested. Are you air gunners interested in a bike that you can get up into the backwoods that's inexpensive? Um... And has quality components on it. Because this appears to. So we will have to check that out. I have a phone call coming in. I'm going to have to cut. And I will be right back, guys. Well, that was interesting. That was a phone call. I'm sorry I had to take that. And that was from the e-bike company. Just right then. So the irony, right? Um, I left a message with them before I ordered the bike. And I wasn't really expecting anything back. But they called. So that was cool. Um... We were just discussing a little bit about the bike, and they want to make sure I'm happy with it, and I told them that I might be doing a review on it, and they're excited about that. So, um, yeah, that's pretty cool, and I guess they're going to have one of their their um, business directors, I believe it is, give me a call later on so we can discuss some things about it. So if you want, guys, I'll keep you updated on that. If not, just let me know if you don't want to hear that crap, but that's okay. But back to this. Look at this monster. Carney, third, <laughs> it's a carnivore 30 cal brake barrel. I can't wait to, to pump it. I'm not going to do it till I'm ready to load it. And I want to go over and make sure everything's lubricated and working properly. And I'll set my trigger to my, the pull that I feel it should be. Um, but you guys will definitely see me at the range with this very soon. This is going to be my, um, my Zen gun when I want to go out and um, shoot and not bring a lot of stuff with me. So, um, but it's still expensive to shoot because, well, it's a 30 gal, but still a fun gun. Pop your slug in, pull the trigger. Thanks for watching M&B Air Gun Review, guys. I hope I wasn't too boring for you today. And uh, if you could, kindly hit that like button. Share, subscribe, and I'll be back to you really soon with the results for what you're all waiting for. The AEA Challenger versus the Cattleman M1. Stay tuned. You do not want to miss that showdown.